Good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for checking out another Input Mapper Chicken. Um, I got a couple things to show off today. Um, actually, only really one thing that uh, has changed. And um, I don't know if anybody read the uh, update I posted on the website about uh, some of the things that I'm changing with the stick mapping. Um, but yeah, I'm going to kind of show off uh, a little bit of that. Um, a lot of the key plate, a lot of the key pieces uh, didn't fall into place until actually this morning, so it's not too involved yet. Certainly not to the level that I um, intend it to be. Uh, but there's enough to give you guys a general sense of the direction that I'm taking it. Starting it up here, it's taking a second to compile. Okay, so here we go. Um, UI wise, nothing really has changed yet. Um, I still want to add more configuration options now that I have, you know, things pretty much where I want them. Um, I want to add some more configuration options back in to allow people to change the, the look and feel of it. Um, you know, if they want to go with like an icon only uh, navigation bar over here or uh, change the colors or possibly even the icons themselves um, from within the icon font that we're using. Uh, I want to open up some of those features. Um, so that's something that's going to come along, but it's uh, UI isn't a terribly high priority right now. Um, right now I want to get uh, some of the things I'm working on right now that are a higher priority is uh, converting all the settings and the properties and everything that this application uses um, into uh, like bindable uh, properties and what I mean by that is the when I uh, first wrote this input mapper 1.5 um, and I made the leap from Windows Forms over to WPF which is what this is um, it's kind of like a framework that uh, the visual UI is built on uh, when I made that leap I had no understanding of how you know uh, you can bind um, UI elements to properties uh, and, you know, they have two-way communication where if I'm, you know, checking or unchecking a box, it's changing that, you know, property automatically. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is like hard-coded and uh, manually hooking on to events of, you know, when I'm clicking stuff to actually update the property. So it's really messy. Um, so the, I'm working on cleaning up the code a little bit at a time. And as a result, I'm also, you know, in the position where, you know, I'm in that code and I'm able to add, you know, a lot of functionality that uh, was either broken or missing. Um, here I'm going to show off some of the, the access tuning, the axes tuning um, that I'm working on. Um, you'll see that I don't have it on the right stick yet. Left stick is my... Uh, my test platform for all these changes so far, um, but I'm bringing back the uh, the graph that Input Mapper 1.4 had that allowed you to visualize, um, you know, these changes that you're making in the sensitivity and your curve, um, so you can actually get a feel for you know, because the numbers are kind of hard to picture what's actually happening in the back end, um, and what this is is we have you know our our uh, controller input is the x-axis here so as we move you know from dead center zero zero here as we move to the right we're adding input onto the right stick and the the y-axis the up is the output so you see here I have some dead zone uh, approximately 32 percent and you know I'm moving right here and you know I'm inputting on the stick but because of that dead zone nothing's outputting until I get to about 32 percent and then you know 
the rest of the equation takes over my sensitivity and my curve and all that. So, I mean, that should help people visualize what they're actually doing. And um, this graph will probably have to be a little bigger. Uh, I certainly have the room for it. It's kind of hard to make out what's going on on such a little graph. Um, and the other thing, you know, that this is opening up to me is um, I wanted the ability for people to not just specify uh, mappings per stick, but to actually uh, specify mappings per axis, axi for each stick and even per throw. Uh, so you see here I have a checkbox where it says indep independent negative settings. If I check that, um, I get three more sliders where I can set the negative sensitivity, negative curve, negative dead zone. And you see this changed here on the negative side of my axis um, to give me the option to modify what happens when the stick is to the negative side independently. Um, so this is, this should help people, you know, get a lot more functionality customization um, out of their stick and pretty much get them to behave exactly how they, you know, would like them to. Um, and this is going to be further expanded to um, right now, it's only working off the x-axis. Um, I haven't added in the logic yet where it understands that the stick has an x and y-axis. So if you, you know, check um, these boxes, not only will you see uh, the positive and negative, but you'll also see uh, different sliders for the x-axis positive and negative, uh, different sliders for the y-axis positive and negative. Um, so essentially four sets of sliders. Uh, one for each direction that you can throw the stick and um, you'll have the option to whether or not you want to do all that or you just uncheck all these and just use you know the original three sliders and you see it, it sets everything to just use these um, so it can get as in-depth as people want or as you know easy as people want so um, I mean that's pretty much all I really have to show in the application that's new. Um, the macros are still at the last state that you guys uh, saw them in. Um, it's it, I'm splitting my time between upgrading the profiles and the macros. Um, the profiles needed to be upgraded as a result of the changes I'm making in the macros because the the XML format and the uh, the class objects I was using were just not going to support the, the complexity of the new macro system. So um, this turned into a prerequisite for upgrading the macro. So that's that's why this stuff is kind of starting to pop up before the uh, the macros are done. Uh, so that'll about do it. That's just a quick check in on where I stand uh, this week here. I'm going to keep working on that. I actually think I can have the um, new profile bindings and mapping and all that stuff. I can probably have that done this week. Um, it's just tedious work going in there and, you know, manually changing the code from these old uh, properties to these new properties that have the correct interface that uh, allow it to be bindable with uh, live data and all that. It's just a matter of time, uh, really. So, uh, that'll do it, guys. Uh, any questions or comments, try to hiss up in the forum because the YouTube messages are still hit or miss. Uh, all right, everybody have a good one. See ya.